Good morning. My name is Kate. We only have an hour together to do yoga. I sent you a playlist. You just have to click on it. I make sure it's not on shuffle and we'll do it together in a moment. If you have a block, put that towards the top of your mat or something you like in place of a block. Not 100% necessary, but it's always nice to have it on hand. Welcome. Good morning. I hope everyone is doing well. It is sunny and beautiful out. Uh, let's do the yoga. It'll be great. All right. Uh, if you're doing the playlist with me, pull it up. We're going to press on that first one here in three, two, and press play. And then do a belly down Shavasana to begin. So it's lying on your belly. And if that's not comfortable, pick a spot that is, whatever feels best to you. But if you want that belly down Shavasana, place one hand on top of the other. Then place your forehead on top. Let me give your hips a little wiggle to settle in. As you lie in this position, I want you to notice where that air is coming into your body. And you can notice that by where your body is pushing out or into the floor. If you feel your chest pressing down or your belly pushing out, maybe your back rise and fall. And as you begin to deepen your breath, I want your goal to be to make your body move as much as possible. How much space can you push out, take up? Like often we are scared to take up space in the world. You have every right to be here. You have every right to take up that space. So utilize it. I'm going to talk a little bit about hope because I've been feeling a little hopeful lately. And after the year that we have had, uh, it feels a little foreign, a little scary. And of course it is because we are scared of getting our hopes up and having to dash to the ground. And it's a very normal feeling to have. But hope is a funny thing. There have been times in life where I was so low in such a dark spot that I thought there was no way I could get through this thing there's no way that I could see past it or that there's going to be a better day. But ultimately there was. And had I not believed that some place inside of me, I probably still wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have found that better spot. So hope, even when we think it's not there, it usually is a tiny little bit, right? And that's pretty incredible. It has the ability to persevere against all odds. And so here we are again, after this horribly hard time, starting to feel a little hopeful, like maybe, just maybe, things might return to normal at some point. But do we want it to be completely normal as it was? No, I hope that we've grown. But it's a choice that we have to make. Right? And choices, choices are hard and they're scary. But here in yoga, it's a pretty uh, safe place. It's not so scary. So we'll practice. I want you to make a choice of how you want to show up to your yoga practice. Because when you set a goal for yourself, uh, it's very similar to hope, right? A goal is something you strive for. Hope gives us something to look forward to or something to strive for. So really they go hand in hand. So how do you want to show up to your practice today? There's no judgment here, it's completely up to you. I just want you to pick something and then stick with it. So thinking of how you want to show up, your choice, your decision, clear the air from your lungs. Take a deep breath in, fill up, take up space. And then give a great big open mouth exhale. And take a little movement, maybe wiggle your toes, maybe remove your hands from underneath your forehead and rock it from side to side on your mat. You can bend your knees, roll out your ankles, maybe windshield wiper your knees a little from side to side. And we will meet in a sphinx pose when you are ready. Set your feet down, pressing into the top sides of your feet very lightly. Come to your forearms, 
place them parallel in front of you, palms face down, with your fingers spread really wide. Now lift your navel in and up towards your sternum and pull your ribs in towards one another. Feel your belly lift a little higher from the mat. Draw your shoulders back, pull your collarbones apart. Lift your chin just slightly. And then grip the mat with your palms and pull your shoulders back. Feel that opening in the front line of your body. As you inhale, feel your chest push out. As you exhale, feel the shoulders relax. Bring your chin over to the left, give your neck a little stretch. And through center and over to the right. You can do that a couple of times, going gently from side to side. Then come to the center and draw your chin towards your chest and really push into your forearms and palms. Your shoulders might feel like they're rounding forward slightly and you get a bigger stretch between your shoulders and in the back of your neck. Come back up to neutral with your chin. Lower your chest down and slide your palms under your shoulders now. Squeeze your elbows in and back. Push a little more firmly into your feet until your kneecaps lift off of the ground. And then keep your feet connected as you find a baby cobra. Lift your chest. So navel in and up, ribs together, that Uriyana Bandha, your core lock fully engaged. Feet stay grounded as your shoulders draw back. And drop your shoulders away from your earlobes a little if you can. Grip the mat, statically pull back to lift your chest even higher. Slowly lower your chest down. Now, here I want you to push firmly into your feet. Feel your muscles and your thighs fully engaged. Feet stay connected, and then push into your mat to find a full cobra pose. Your belly lifts off of the mat. Pull your elbows in towards your ribs, slightly bent. Push more weight into your fingertips and draw your shoulders back. Lift your chin ever so slightly. Take a deep breath in. Take a slow breath out, full body inhale, full body exhale, slowly lower back down. From here, push all the way back into extended child's pose. Lift, bring your hips back. Maybe you take a little puppy dog wag of your tail on the way. This is a real thing. My dogs do this every single morning. That's why it's called puppy dog pose. And then settle into extended child's pose, third eye center, pressing into the earth, shoulders drawn down your back, and come back to your breath. Full body inhale and exhale, allowing yourself to take up space. You are rightfully taking your place in the world. Fill your body with air and life and energy and you send out all the things that do not serve you. Deep breath in, and a slow breath out. Constrict the muscles in the base of your throat now. Engage Ujjayi Pranayama. In and out just through your nose, building heat through your body, that fire that fuels your practice. So you wanna rock your forehead from side to side on the mat one more time. When you're ready, come into tabletop. And in tabletop, you can take movement. It's whatever feels best in your body. It might be cat and cow. It might be barrel rolls out to the side. You might choose a wrist stretch in there. Sometimes I think it helps to close your eyes as you find these movements. It helps you start to move in an organic way that is not necessarily a pose or something that we think we're supposed to do. Just really listening to your body. And then come to a flat back, curl your toes underneath you, lift your hips into a downward facing dog. And then again, take some free movement, pedal your feet, roll out your ankles, bend your knees, anything at all that you like, but do something that feels good. Something that helps your body wake up and feel energized for your practice.
You find stillness in your downward facing dog. Make it strong. Push into your fingertips. Draw your shoulders back. Draw your chest towards your thighs. Take a deep breath in. Take a slow breath out. Inhale, stretch your right toes high. Exhale, bring your knee to your nose and pause. Carve out your belly. Push into your left toes to bring your body weight forward. Push, push into your fingertips hard, less weight in the heel of your hands. Draw your forehead a little closer towards your knee. Feel that strength in your belly. Each and every time, make it this strong. Inhale, stretch your toes high. Exhale, carve out your belly as you step through low lunge. Now bring your left knee down to the ground. Engage your thigh muscles and rise, crescent boom. Bring your arms all the way overhead, relax your shoulders. Pull back with your right hip, push the left hip forward until you sink down and feel the stretch in the front of your left thigh. From here, open your arms. A little bend to your elbows, palms, face up. You're dipping deep into your hips, feeling that great big stretch in the front line of your body. Now take a deep breath. Exhale, round your spine. Your hips come back as you work to bring your fingertips together in front of you. Tuck your chin to your chest and lift your elbows. So here, your hips come back to scoop your pelvis underneath. You're making a C curve with your spine. Now inhale, open up. Drop back into your hips. So you come forward with your hips as your chest lifts and your arms open. Exhale, contract and round close. C curve in your spine. Do it one more time. Inhale, open. And exhale, bring it back and close. Now inhale, crescent moon. Come forward into your hips. Reach forward and then up. Exhale, flip your palms forward. Bend your elbows to about 90 degrees. Lift your gaze, take a deep breath. Exhale, if you want, you can lean your shoulders back just slightly into a tiny little back bend. Inhale, arms high. Exhale, palms down, hips back, half splits. Flex your right foot and point and flex a few times. Keep your back as flat as you can here instead of rounding forward. And then hold your toes back in a flexed position. Dig your heel into the mat and statically pull backwards, lengthening your entire leg, increasing the stretch. Maybe your chest comes down a little lower towards your leg. Good. All right. Walk it forward and back to your lunge. Curl your back toes underneath. Inhale, right toes high. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in. Stretch your left toes high. Exhale, bring your knee to your nose and pause. Again, you're bringing body weight forward. So your shoulders actually come over your fingertips. You push firmly into your right toes. Your pelvis scoops underneath you to draw that knee in. And even though I say uh, knee to nose, it's really knee to forehead. Really curl it in tightly here. Make it this strong every time we move. Inhale, toes high. Exhale, knee to nose and low lunge. You step down. Bring your right knee down. So you see how that works? You're creating more space for that knee to come through into your lunge. Rise on up, crescent moon, arms high. Settle into your hips. I want you to feel the stretch in your right thigh this time. Stay forward in your hips, open your arms and look up. Take a deep breath in, open the front leg of your body. Exhale, contract and round. Your hips come back. You scoop out your belly and your pelvis and then actively push your fingertips together. Now, if they don't reach because your shoulders are really tight, that's okay. Just try to feel that energy there. But if they touch, push and do it firmly. Now we move. Inhale, slide into your hips, open your arms. Exhale, round it, close. One more time. Inhale, open, drop forward. Exhale. Bring it back, close it off. Inhale, crescent moon, come forward, reach forward with your hands and then up. Exhale, flip your palms forward, go post your arms. Inhale, take a deep breath, lengthen. Exhale, lean your shoulders back a little if you want. Inhale, arms high. Exhale, palms down, hips back. Point and flex your left foot a few times. And hold your toes back in a flexed position. Lengthen your spine, drop your chest. 
Try that static pull back to lengthen your left leg. Good, walk it forward, come to your lunge, curl your right toes underneath you. Inhale, left foot high. Exhale, downward facing dog. Give your feet a little pedal here. All right, inhale, look forward. Exhale, step to the top of your mat, feet hip width distance apart. Put a deep bend to your knees, nod your head yes, shake it no. Sway a little side to side, whatever feels best here. All right, and then toe heel your feet together to touch as long as it serves your balance. Put a little bend to your knees. Inhale to a halfway lift. Push into your shins or your thighs and pause. You are actively pushing to lengthen your spine. You're not hanging, your arms are not dangling, uh, and your hands are not here just to put them here. Push and lengthen, tip weight into your toes. Take a deep breath. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Tadasana, mountain pose, rise and stand tall. Exhale, release your hands to your lower back, fingertips facing down, squeeze your elbows together behind you. Here, push your hips forward. So your hips are coming almost over your toes. Look up in the air. So here you have a supported back bend. You can stay or you can lean into it a little further. Grip the mat with your toes as your shoulders come back. Next, inhale, Sadasana. Rise on up. Bring your arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Hinge from your hips. Tiny little bend to your knees. Inhale, halfway lift. Bring the weight into your toes again. Exhale, high plank. Plant your palms. Step your feet back. And then bend your elbows. Come halfway down. Flip to the tops of your feet. Inhale, upward facing dog. Keep little bends in your elbows here. Exhale, downward facing dog, lift your hips, take a breath, and exhale. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward. Inhale, halfway lift, flatten your back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Tadasana, mountain pose. Exhale, flip your palms forward. Bend your elbows to 90 degrees, goal post your arms. Inhale, lift straight up with your lower back. Exhale, tip just your shoulders back. So here, you're going into a little different back bend. How does it feel? What do you need to do to stabilize, to make it feel okay in your body? Grip the mat tightly. Pull your ribs in together, nice and strong. Good, inhale, Tadasana, mountain pose, come on up. Exhale, forward fold, hinge at your hips. Inhale, halfway lift, tuck your chin, look down at the ground rather than forward here. Exhale, high plank, plant your palms, step it back, take a deep inhale. Exhale, come halfway down. Can your elbows touch your sides as you do this? Inhale, upward facing dog, push into your fingertips, not the heel of your hands. Exhale, downward facing dog with your hips. Take a breath. Exhale it out. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Tadasana, mountain pose. Exhale into a back bend, any depth, any variation that you like, and hold and breathe. Work your way from the ground up. Start at the soles of your feet where you're connected to the earth and make it feel stronger. Strengthen your connection, strengthen your stability, and then you slowly work your way up your legs. You can into your pelvis and your hips, into your core. You open your chest, working your way all the way up so that your throat is opening towards the sky. Find your ujjayi breath here. And it's meant to be challenging. It's meant to be hard to breathe uh, with constriction in your throat while stretching it open. All right. Now move slow. Inhale, Tadasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga high to low plank. Inhale through upward facing dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. Take a slow breath out. 
What was your choice? What was your decision for your practice today? Maybe your goal for yourself or your decision was that you're going to take a step back. You're going to modify all the time. You're going to really take it easy and let your body uh, talk for you. That's wonderful. Maybe your decision was, I am going to try something new today that I haven't tried before that normally I shy away from. That's great too. Whatever it is, remember, there's no judgment. It is just purely that I want you to stick with it. Whatever you decided, you see it through. Now, all together, clear the air from your lungs. Take a great big Ujjayi breath in. And a nice, slow, controlled Ujjayi breath out. Inhale, stretch your right toes high. Exhale, bring your knee to your nose. Carve out your belly. Inhale, stretch your right toes high. Exhale, knee to nose, bring your body weight forward. One more, inhale, toes high. Exhale, knee to forehead and lunge. Step it down. Inhale, press it, lunge. Stand, bring your arms overhead and breathe. Settle in, find your balance, find your stability. I know that that might mean coming down to your left knee to start here, and that's completely fine. It is always an option for you. If you are upright, lengthen your back leg, push into your left toes, and then draw your shoulders up over your hips rather than leaning forward. Now here, open your arms again. Elbows slightly bent, palms face up. You lift your gaze. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, contract and round. Now, this time your left knee is going to have to bend if you're upright to make that happen. So bend your left knee, scoop your pelvis, round your shoulders forward and push your fingertips together, chin to chest. All right, inhale, open. Lengthen the left leg again. Come forward into your hips. Exhale, contract and round it close. Bring your chin to your chest, bend your knee. Do it again one last time. Inhale, open, lengthen. Exhale, round it, close, lift your elbows to shoulder height. Now inhale, reach forward and up, crescent lunge. Exhale, flip your palms forward, bend your elbows to 90 degrees. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, lean your shoulders back just a tiny little bit. It doesn't have to be the deepest back bend you've ever taken, but I want you to start to feel that opening in your chest again. Good, inhale, rise back up, arms high. Exhale, warrior one, swing your left heel down to the mat. Now here, take your hands, put them on your hips for a moment. I want you to push your left hip forward and pull your right hip back. You are working to square your hips to the front of the mat, not opening to the side like you would in warrior two. So it's pushing forward with your left hip while staying grounded in the back foot. Now look at your back foot, your left foot. You want your knee and your toes to be in the same line. So if I bend my knee, it lines up with my toes. If your knee is inside of your foot, I need you to pivot your toes in a little. Generally, your back toes will point towards that top left corner of your mat, and you have heel to heel alignment in your feet. And I'm spending so much time on this uh, because if you don't do these things, you can twist your back knee and it really hurts and it does not feel good and nobody wants that. All right, so you have all these things happening in your lower limbs. Now bring your arms overhead again, back to warrior one. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, bend your knee a little bit deeper. Good, one more big inhale. Exhale, warrior two. Now you open your hips to the side, toe heel your right foot in just about an inch or two. So now it's heel to arch alignment. Track your right knee open just a little bit. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, extended side angle. Left arm reaches high. Right hand pulls low in opposition. So it's like you're being pulled in two different directions. I want you to make your wingspan huge. You also have the option to rest your elbow on your thigh. If you take it though, push into it. You're not bearing weight down. You're strong. You have a lift of your ribs from your thigh and your hips drop down. So you're imagining a long line from the pinky edge side of your back foot all the way through the crown of your head here. Um, if your hips are jutting out, you're cutting off that line of energy, right? So tracking the knee open just slightly allows a little more space. And yes, your right leg probably feels like it's going to come off of your body at this point. It's working very hard. Hello, glutes and hamstrings. Um, it won't, I promise. Get really low, stay this low, and then inhale, reverse warrior. 
Exhale, chaturanga high to low plank. Hands down, right foot back. Inhale through upward facing dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. Good, take a breath. And exhale. All right, inhale, left toes high. Exhale, knee to nose. Carve out your belly. Bring your body weight forward. Inhale, toes high. Exhale, knee to nose. Keep tiny little bends to your elbows. Inhale, toes up. Exhale, knee to nose and step down to low lunge. Inhale, crescent lunge, rise on up. Exhale here, find your balance, find your stability, and know that the right knee is 100% an option for you. If you're upright, lengthen your right leg, push into the toes, heel comes over the ball mound of your foot. Shoulders upright over your hips. Keep it just like this, but open your arms and lift your chest. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, contract and round close. Your right knee will bend as you scoop your pelvis. Tuck your chin, lift your elbows. Inhale, open, re-lengthen the right leg, drop into your hips, come forward. Exhale, contract and round close, bring the weight back. One more, inhale, open up wide. Exhale, close it tight. Inhale, reach forward, then up, crescent lunge. Exhale, palms forward, elbows to 90 degrees. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, lean your shoulders back just a tiny little bit. Create more space between your chest and your chin. Pull your ribs in more tightly uh, to really strengthen through your spine. Now inhale, come on up. Exhale, warrior one, swing your right heel down this time. And again, spend a little time making it feel okay in your body. Uh, deep bend in your left knee. And this time the right hip is pushing forward, left hip is pulling back. And yeah, you can use your hands. Uh, right knee and toes in line. That might mean pivoting your toes kind of in a little. It might mean lengthening or shortening your stance. But try and keep a connection to your mat with the pinky edge side of your right foot. It's not lifting the heel like crescent lunge. The foot is fully down here. All right, and then once your lower limbs feel okay, and I say okay because it might not feel great, but I don't want it to be painful in your knee. Uh, left leg is gonna work real hard, right? <laughs> Bring your arms overhead. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, get even lower. Inhale. Exhale, warrior two. Open up to the side. Bring that foot in just a tiny little bit on the front. Heel to arch alignment. Track your left knee open ever so slightly to the left side. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, extended side angle here. Hold and breathe. Find your great wide open wingspan. Find that lift of your ribs away from your left thigh. Dip your hips so that you find that long line of energy in the right side of your body. And I want you to feel which muscles are working for you right now. Obviously, the muscles in your left uh, thigh, your glute, they're working really hard. But what about your upper body? The muscles in your lower back are part of this lift. The muscles along your spine really work to lift, as do your obliques, the side of your torso. So keep these muscles really engaged and strong. And the more you're paying attention to which muscles are working, the better they work for you. And that's why I tell you this, uh, mind to muscle connection is a legitimate thing. So breathe into this shape in your body. That would mean inhales lengthening, exhales twisting a little further or dropping lower in your hips. Good. All right, you stay this low in your hips and in your front knee. And as you inhale, reverse warrior, lift your left hand up. Exhale, chaturanga high to low plank, bring it down. Inhale through upward facing dog. And exhale back down. Take a deep inhale. And a full exhale. Make it stronger, make it louder. Full breath in. And full breath out. All right, inhale, stretch your right toes high. Exhale, knee to nose. And then step through, low lunge right away this time. Inhale, crescent lunge, come on up. Exhale, settle into your hips. Inhale, open your arms wide. Exhale, contract and round it closed. Inhale, open. Exhale, round and close. One more, inhale, stretch it out. Exhale, bring it back in. Inhale, crescent lunge, reach forward and up. 
Exhale, palms forward, elbows to 90. Take a breath. Exhale, lean your shoulders back. And this time, once you're coming into that back bend, I want you to flip your palms towards each other. And then stretch your fingertips up and back behind you. So now you have long arms. And the longer your arms are, the deeper you sink into your hips. Inhale, crescent, come back up. Exhale into warrior one. Spin your left heel down. Right hip back, left hip forward. Now release your hands behind you. Interlace your fingers, press the heel of your hands together. Take a deep breath, lift your heart as high as you can, pull your knuckles as low as you can. Exhale, humble warrior. Lean with your chest, bring it forward. Reach your knuckles up, tuck your chin as you come down. As you come into your depth, pull back with your right hip, push your left hip forward. Once again, you are working to square your hips to the front. That may not happen today, and that's okay. But attempt it. Push that left hip forward. And by tracking your right knee just slightly to the right, opening it up, can create that space for your hips. So try it. If your right shoulder lines up with your thigh, you can actually push into it to create that space. You're muscling your way into it a little bit. Keep that connection with your back foot. And then once again, come back to this idea of that C curve in your spine. It's the same shape you've been taking. Your pelvis is scooped, your shoulders are rounded, your chin is in your chest. Once again, you realize how hard it is to breathe uh, while you're holding your chin in. It is supposed to be a challenge to find Ujjayi breath. That's why we do it. All right, and you have one more breath here. And then you can very, very slowly begin to come out of it, but I want you to go slowly. One vertebrae at a time slow as you make your way back up. Your chin will be the last thing to lift when you get there. Then you release your grip and bring your arms overhead. So you're back in warrior one. You take a full breath in. Exhale, warrior two. Open to the side. Bring your foot in a little. Inhale, reach. Exhale, extended side angle. Lift down at your right foot. Inhale. Exhale, half moon. Launch off the left foot. Bring it up in the air. Now, breathe here. You can use your block to bring the floor closer to you. Uh, you could have your hand on the ground to start, but I do want you to make sure that your right toes and your right heel are in line, pointing forward, and not that the heel is to the right and your toes are coming into the left. Uh, that twists your knee again, not great. Uh, so just bring that heel in. Once you have that, then you can work on deepening the pulse. Open your left hip. So it's almost like you're rolling it open and then trying to stack it on top of the right hip. You pull your left shoulder back. And then from here, those very same muscles that you were using an extended side angle are being used to lift your torso, working to make it parallel to the floor. And working to is the key there. It doesn't have to happen, right? Uh, but in the full pose, uh, from your left heel here through the crown of your head, it would be one long line that is parallel to the ground. So very similar uh, to like an airplane pose, that capital T shape idea, except for you have a hand up in the air, right? And you're opening to the side. Wherever you are, I want you to push it until you fall out of the pose. And that sounds silly, right? I want you to fall in yoga, uh, but I do. I want you to fall out of it because that means that you are going past that level of comfort. Now, the only exception to that is if your decision today was to modify and step back, then you don't have to push it and fall out. Everybody else, you have to fall. Uh, not horribly hard, painful falls, right? Just like tip, tip out of it. Push yourself to find that area of discomfort where you maybe don't feel as stable. And then very slowly, very gently, I want you to step your left foot down. So bend your right knee. Your hand can come down to your block or the floor for support. Keep a deep bend in your front knee. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, chaturanga high to low plank. Inhale, through upward facing dog. And exhale, to downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your left toes high. Exhale, bring your knee to your nose, carve out your belly. And then step down, lunge. Inhale, crescent lunge, rise and come up. Exhale, settle into your hips. Inhale, open your arms. Exhale, contract and round it close, chin to chest. Inhale, 
open, lengthen. Exhale, round and close. One more, inhale, lengthen your back legs, sink into your hips. Exhale, round it in. Inhale, crescent lunge, reach forward and up. Exhale, palms forward, both most arms. Inhale, lengthen through your lumbar spine. Exhale, bring your shoulders back. Flip your palms towards each other. Stretch your fingers up, up behind you. The more you stretch them out, the deeper I want you to get into your front knee. Good. All right, now keep the deep bend in your knee. Come back up, take an inhale. Exhale, warrior one, spin your right heel down. Release your hands behind you. Interlace your fingers. Press the heel of your hands firmly together. I want them to touch, and then you don't let that go. Inhale, draw your knuckles down. Exhale, humble warrior, lead with your chest. You can even start pulling that left hip back as you make your way down. Deep, deep bend in your left knee, as deep as you can go. You tuck your chin and reach your hands up and over as far as you can to open through your shoulders and chest. Left hip back, right hip forward, working to square your hips. Maybe, just maybe the crown of your head comes all the way down to your mat. That is something that happens eventually in Humble Warrior, yes. You get real low. Breathe. And all those sensations in your body and in your left leg. Maybe it's a cramp in your right ankle. And you breathe into it. You send it energy. You acknowledge its presence rather than trying to pretend like it's not happening. It's all part of being present. You can't be present uh, while ignoring the uncomfortable parts. Bougie breath, make it strong, make it loud. You have two more breaths here. Now, no cheating, two full breaths. Yeah, and at the bottom of that second breath, you can slowly start to come out again. But remember, it's nice and slow, one vertebrae at a time. At the top, release your grip, bring your arms overhead, take a deep breath. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reach. Exhale, extended side angle. Look down, breathe in, breathe out, half moon, right foot lifts up. Make sure that your left heel and toes are in line. From there, you can lengthen your standing leg. And I find in a pose like this to lengthen that leg, the best way for me to do it is to imagine I'm pushing the mat away from me. So I'm pushing into the floor, lifting, 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 and then dialing it over. Right hip comes back, right shoulder comes back, and that's generally when our entire body weight comes back, right? We tend to tip to that direction. Uh, so here it would be to the left. So the more weight that you can put into the arch of your left foot on your standing leg here, um, the better it's gonna feel balance-wise. Play with it, fall out of it, get back in, get back in, fall out, fall out, get back in, over and over and over again. You just keep repeating it. You have a few more breaths. Get uncomfortable. All right, and then ever so slowly, you can bend your front knee, bring the back foot down. Keep the deep bend in your front knee. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, chaturanga, high to low plank. Inhale through upward facing dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. Now we're gonna play a little bit with these transitions into different poses. Uh, so switching it up just a little bit. Clear the air from your lungs. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Inhale, stretch your right toes high. Exhale, low lunge. Carve out your belly, rub your spine as you step through. Inhale, rise up, crescent lunge. Exhale, settle in. Inhale, open your arms. Exhale, contract and round it closed. Inhale, reach forward and up, crescent lunge. Exhale, back bend, lean, your finger, or lean forward with your hips, bring your fingertips back. Inhale, rise back up. Exhale, 
warrior one. Spin your heel down. Release your hands. Take a deep inhale. Lift your chest. Exhale, humble warrior. Bring it down. Now, within the humble warrior, I want you to bring your left foot in just a little bit. So just like a little hop or a little toe heel in. Put all of the weight into your right foot. Deep in the bend in your right knee. From here, toppling tree. Lift your left toes up. And then push into the ground. Like you're pushing it away from you to bring your toes up. Your chest is pulling towards your thigh. Your knuckles are reaching up and over, just like Humble Warrior. But now you have a foot up in the air. Yeah. All right. And you hold it as long as you can. And when you can't hold it anymore, you can find standing splits by releasing your grip and bringing your hands down to the ground. Now, Generally in standing splits, I tell you to tuck your hip, but we're doing something different today. If you want your block, absolutely grab it. From here, it's half moon. Because your hip is already open from that toppling tree, lift your left hand. That's it. And then you just twist up through your spine. And then from here, maybe you start to lift through your torso. Look at that. And you're here again. Take a deep breath in. Take a slow breath out. Full body inhale. Exhale, step your left foot down. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, chaturanga high to low plank. Inhale through upward facing dog. And exhale, back down. Inhale, left toes high. Exhale, knee to nose and low lunge, step it down. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, settle in. Breathe in, open your arms. Breathe out, round it closed. Inhale, reach forward and up. Exhale into a back bend, fingertips long behind you. Inhale, up. Exhale, warrior one, spin your heel down. Release your hands behind you, breathe in. Breathe out, humble warrior, bring your chest down. Toe heel that back foot in or take a little hop. Bring the weight forward into your left foot. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, toppling tree. Start to lift the right toes up. Then push into the ground, lengthen your standing leg, and lift your right toes as high as you can while getting your head as low as you can. Pull your chest towards your thigh. Open through your shoulders by pulling the knuckles forward. When you can't hold your toppling tree anymore, very fitting name, right? Release your hands down and you can find standing splits. And then once you have that support, you just dial open the right shoulder, lifting the right hand high, and you're back in half move. Maybe you want to lift. Find your breath. So good. One more big inhale. Exhale, step your back foot down. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, chaturanga high to low plank. Inhale through, upward facing dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Inhale through your nose. Give an open mouth exhale, really slow heat. Inhale, new fresh energy. Open mouth exhale, release what does not serve you. And then come back to your ujjayi breath in and your ujjayi breath out. Full body inhale. Full body exhale. Inhale, look forward. Exhale into the top of your mat, and I want you to come on down to your knees. So you'll be standing on your knees. If that's not comfortable, you can fold up your mat uh, to have a little more cushion. Uh, your knees about hip width distance apart. Place your hands to your lower back and pull your elbows together. Push your hips forward and lift your gaze. Here's some strasana, camel pose. And we're not gonna stay here very long so don't get into your deepest uh, version of the pose. Uh, just feel that support with your hands on your back. Uh, feel your hips pushing forward. And I want your hips to stay pushing forward no matter how far you ever take the pose. All right, now bring uh, your gaze a little further back. See how your neck is feeling. All right, now come back to the top. Have a seat on your heels. Take a deep breath in. And a slow breath out. Ujjayi breath in through your nose. Ujjayi breath out through your nose. All right, so we're going to do it again. And this time you are going to hold it and lay with the depth that you go. So come back to your knees. Hands to your lower back to start, no matter what. 
push your hips forward, pull your ribs in. Keeping Uddiyana Bandha fully intact is going to protect your spine. Look up. Start to walk your gaze back. Now, you can stay there. That is what's awesome. You don't have to go further. If you want to go further, absolutely go for it. You round your shoulders back, but while maintaining that lift of your lumbar spine. So it feels like you're lifting straight up, and then your ribs kind of push forward as your shoulders come back. If you would like, you can release one hand at a time down to your heels. Once you have your heels, again, push your hips forward. Squeeze your glutes as hard as you can, and that's going to help with that push. But leaning back with your hips behind you uh, is going to put more strain on the tendons and the ligaments that connect to your knees. So hips stacked over knees. If you easily touch your heels, maybe you want to try flat palms to soles of feet. If you're feeling very bendy this morning, uh, you can take it into a full pigeon, uh, which would be like a very big back bend, forearms coming down. I'm not gonna do it today. I have an injury in my neck that does not feel great. Uh, but just know there are other options um, that you can go into from this as well. You have a few more breaths and it does get uncomfortable. That's because this is a great big heart opening pose and heart opening poses mean that you're opening up the energies within your heart chakra. And your heart chakra has a lot of emotion attached to it. And love is one of those things. And love tends to bring up feelings of nausea and dizziness and giddiness and all of that, right? And that's what comes up in this pose too. All right, now very, very slowly, you start to come back up. Bring your hands to your back if they were not there. Have a seat on your heels. Bring your palms face up on your legs and close your eyes. Open both exhales, letting it go. Because that's the thing, when these things come up um, and they can feel like a physical sensation, it can feel emotional, but that means that whatever is coming up has served its purpose and it's trying to get out. So let it out, help it out, clear the air from your lungs, take a deep breath in, forceful open mouth exhale. Seconds, it's a lion's breath, deep breath in. Open mouth, let it go. One more like that. Inhale, new fresh energy. And then open mouth, exhale to release what does not serve you. Good. Back to Ujjayi breath again. In and out through your nose, constricted throat. Sasangasana is one of my favorite poses to say. Sasangasana is rabbit pose, which is the counter pose to camel. So mitts and hands, fingers together, thumbs apart. And you grab your heels, fingers on the inside, thumbs on the outside, uh, and sit as tall as you can. Most likely, if you are doing this, your heels came apart. Try to pull them in as much as you can, or if you can't reach your heels, you can also hold on to your mat. Now you practice the same C curve we've been doing this entire class. So carve out your belly, scoop your pelvis underneath you, and round your shoulders. You're working to bring your forehead down to your knees. So come on down. Now, re-tighten your grip on your heels once you're there. If your forehead doesn't reach your knees, that is okay, but I don't want you to move forward with the next steps that I'm going to say. I want you to stay as you are and just work on that rounding and that opening because if you can't reach your knees, it's probably really uh, tight upper back and shoulders. Uh, so work on loosening it up, breathe into this shape. If your forehead is on your knees, lift your hips off of your heels. You're rounding forward, the crown of your head reaches down to the floor in front of you. And then if your forehead touches, or if your crown of your head touches the floor, then bring your forehead in to touch your kneecaps. And there it's like you're somersaulting forward, but you won't for two reasons. A, you're an adult, and an adult has a very hard time doing a somersault. Uh, have you tried it recently? It's hard. Um, B, you're holding onto your heels, so you can't physically do that. Um, the tighter you pull on your heels, the better this is gonna get because that's where the stretch is coming in. Uh, you're rolling forward, but pulling on your heels, and that creates a stretch and an opening in your upper back and between your shoulder blades. I think this is probably the pose that I get the most questions on in terms of like, I'm not feeling anything. What, I don't get it. Um, it's rolling forward. So you really gotta bring your body weight forward, pulling yourself in as much as you can, and then physically pulling on your heels very firmly.
then if your hips are lifted, bring them back down. And then a very, very slowly, one vertebrae at a time, come back to the top. And give your shoulders a few shrugs once you get there. Then release your left ear towards your left shoulder. Bring your chin up into the right and drop the right shoulder down. If you feel like you want more stretch in the right side of your neck, reach your left hand behind you, grab your right bicep and pull. So by pulling your arm down, you're going to increase the stretch in the right side of your neck. If you have that grip, let it go. And slowly bring your chin towards your chest and then roll your right ear towards your right shoulder. Bring your chin up into the left and drop your left shoulder down. And if you want more stretch on this side, your right hand reaches behind, grabs the left bicep and gently tugs the left shoulder down for it. And then if you have the grip, let it go. And gently roll from side to side, chin to chest, ear to shoulder. Just being mindful not to bring your head too far back. I don't want you to crunch your vertebrae. And come back to the center. Maybe you want to give your shoulders a few more shrugs. And then you can bring your heels out from underneath you. Stretch your legs on in front of you. Uh, get the circulation going. I don't know if it's just me, but I have horrible circulation. I know that. Um, but sitting in that pose, like sitting on my shins for more than a few breaths, I lose all sensation in my feet. So wiggle them around, uh, circle out your ankles, whatever feels good. And then legs long, flex your feet, and pull the meat up from under your seat. Get a good solid grounding. Bring your arms overhead and sit up as tall as you can. Take a deep breath. Exhale into a forward fold, leading with your chest. And I don't want you to just simply dive forward for your toes, okay? No rounding in your spine. It's a flat back, even if you don't come down very far. And you can stay, if you can grab your feet, great, uh, pull on them, but with chest forward and shoulders back. Or you can bring your hands to the ground, static grip as you pull your hands back, your chest will automatically come forward. Uh, but think of it as constant motion in your body, right? Inhales are creating space between the vertebrae and your spine. Exhales are folding you further. Always working to keep the length in your spine over the depth of how far you're coming down. Slowly come back up. Now bend your knees, bring your hips towards your heels, and roll down to your back. You can hold on to your legs for support if it feels good on the way. And rock a little side to side. And when you're ready, you can turn that into happy baby, grabbing your feet. Rock it up. Okay, then come back to the center, bring your knees in, but extend the left leg all the way down to the floor. Interlace your fingers below the right knee and draw it towards the outer edge of your rib cage. This is called wind removing pose. And I will give you one guess as to why it's called wind removing pose. It's a very literal translation. Uh, squeeze it nice and tight. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, supine twist, draw it across your body. Keep the right shoulder on the mat as you work your way down your spine. Wind removing pose uh, is my son, who is 12 years old, his favorite pose. No kidding, right? Every morning, he's such a sweet boy. Every morning he comes, uh, he wakes up early before he has to go to school uh, so that he can have time to snuggle with his mother before he goes to do all the things. Uh, it's great. At 12 years old, I'll take it, right? Except for that half of the time he crawls into bed and he goes, Mom. We should do some yoga. And I'm like, okay, morning yoga. And 
then he takes winter moving pose and I'll let you know what happens. Uh, <laughs> it's great. It's great. 12 year old boys are wonderful. All right. Bring your knee back in, give it one more little squeeze and then release your right leg down, bring the left knee in, interlace your fingers below the knee, pull it to the outer edge of your ribs, give it a good tight squeeze. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, supine twist, draw the left knee across, left shoulder stays grounded while you work your way down your spine. Motherhood is a magical thing. Just a couple breaths. And then come back to the center. Give your knees a little squeeze if you like. Uh, maybe one last little stretch, legs overhead, roll your ankles, any last little movements that you need uh, to round out your practice before taking a shape for Shavasana. And that shape can be whatever you want today. It could be spreading out. It could be coming to your belly again if that felt really good. Or maybe today you want um, a fetal position if that feels more comforting to you. But pick a spot that feels really good in stillness. And then allow yourself to settle in. Letting go of your ujjayi breath. Letting it just kind of return to normal breathing. Barbara King Solver wrote, the very least you can do in your life is to figure out what you hope for. And the most you can do is live inside that hope, not admire it from a distance, but live right in it under its roof. Hope is a funny thing and it's there even when we don't acknowledge it or don't think that it exists. And it's scary because when you hope for something, you are giving yourself that space uh, you're acknowledging that it can be taken away, that there can be that disappointment or that feeling of being let down. But without the hope, without a goal, we kind of just wander aimlessly. Um, it's really easy without acknowledging the hope, uh, without having it there that we actively choose to see. Um, to be enveloped by the hardships and the challenges and the darkness that there is out there. It's so easy to let that consume you. So a choice. Hope is a choice that you get to take every single day. You choose to see it uh, because it's there, but you have to choose to open your eyes to it and allow it in and to let it guide you or that darkness can take over pretty quick. So I encourage you, to try choosing hope each and every day wake up and you acknowledge it it's there things will get better and then you live in it you live under its roof you soak it in because when you do that others see it right and then they feed off of it and then they start to feel hopeful and they start to share it with someone else and it goes on and on and on and that just creates this beautiful cycle of hope and brightness and light in our world so thank you for being a part of that light. Thank you for being a beacon in my world. And to you, I bow. Namaste.